what do you say we take a look at some marketplace ads, have some laughs, and maybe learn a few lessons on the way. So the first ad is this Jamis bicycle for $100, which I actually think is a pretty good price. Um, this is the kind of bike that I think would make a great kind of like just mass market bike because it's it's really kind of flexible and um and durable you know you've got the these uh, this um 700c threadless fork with posts for cantilever or linear brakes um you know it's compatible with a triple crank it's got lots of eyelets if you want to do touring and stuff um these are great bikes and for a hundred bucks i think it's actually a really good buy um and there are only two pictures in this ad. So the second picture, I, I guess I, I expected it to be a close up of the bike. But when you scroll over, uh, in fact, um, it's a picture of, uh, of a robin in what I assume is the seller's backyard. And let's, even if you ignore the fact um, that, that this particular image is completely unrelated to the task at hand, one thing um, to know and that I find kind of hilarious is that here in New England, um, these birds are probably one of the most common birds around. So if you want to see one, you can um, look outside your window literally at any time of the day, um, pretty much anywhere, and you will see one. Okay, and the second ad is this Schwinn Frontier steel frame road bike with basket and kryptonite lock. Um, and we start with a smash cut to a bike rack label, which is kind of an interesting opening gambit when your listing has created a sense of anticipation for a bike or even a basket or maybe a U-lock. Um, but in photo two, they do deliver on the goods and you see a typical hybrid with some features that deserve a second look. Um, and of course the eye is naturally drawn immediately to those handlebars, which are drop bars installed upside down and backwards, which I've heard referred to as bum bars in the past, but I suppose now we should call them unhoused bars. Um, and I don't know about you, but I always tend to anthropomorphize bikes. And I feel like this one is, um, it's kind of flipping me the bird, you know, like two handed, like the time um, you got fired from Best Buy for leaving out that pallet of monitors overnight and you just flip everyone off while you walk backwards down the loading ramp and then spread off into the woods. That's kind of the vibe I get from this. Um, in this next photo, if you read the badge, okay, take, just take a second, read the badge. Now, if you said Schwino qualitative, you get 10 points because that's what I saw when I saw it first. Um, and then like the thumb shifters were giving us the birds, I feel like the brakes which are kind of like way too close to the sim are kind of like, like it, they make it look like the bike has its arms crossed in disappointment of this whole situation with the handlebars. In the next picture, um, we have the kryptonite lock that was foreshadowed in the listing head. I, I kind of like how like anyone can just plop an object on the ground and take a good picture of it. But this person seemed to want to present it in its like natural environment. And then the last picture, we do have the Yakima bike rack that's also for sale. And this kind of brings you back to that first image. So you realize that like you've actually gone full circle. Okay, and the third ad that we're gonna look at is for a Fuji Tahoe vintage mountain bike. And we start with a really aggressive close up of that front derailleur. Like in filmmaking, we call this a Dutch angle. This photo really took me back and I, and I had to parse it out in my brain for a while because um, I, for a few minutes and I was looking at this, if I thought that the bike was just floating in the air. And I, and I started to think that they could have gotten a lot more money by advertising this as like a haunted bike that levitates from time to time. But then I realized um, it was on a hook that somehow matches the color scheme of the bike. 